Now I would like to call the backbone of our department, none other than the president of this function, Dr. Ramesh Rathor sir. We have created this program very well. Uh, they wanted our chief guest to invite from this side, but I only told our uh, registrar sir to come from the back gate because they had put so many rangolis this side. So they wanted to welcome you from that side. Anyway, while going, I will show your rangolis too. Register, sir. And you are all happy, I suppose, because Register, sir, has spoken very well today and uh, he is a brilliant person. He has studied in this department, Canada department, and uh, he clarified in the beginning that literature is same, but languages are So he has quoted so many uh, good writings of Swami Vivekananda. Allam Prabhu, even our Bhim, Sri Kantaya, and so many writers he has quoted, and he is an educationalist. Uh, he started his profession with teaching only. He taught uh, some years in uh, NV College, I suppose, and from there, continuously he has studied. He started studying for civil service examinations, and that is what he also told you and you have to be in his steps to be successful in your life. So he has cleared your PSI exam on merit and he resigned that post and again he got AS, Karnataka Administrative Service. It is not an easy job, isn't it? So he is a model to you. We can put one dollar and uh, take the bicycle and uh, whole day we can uh, drive the bicycle and see the uh, places there. There are a lot of uh, very good places in Chicago city. Chicago is the third largest city in America. And uh, Swami Vivekananda went there without any preparation. Abruptly he went to America and uh, there he gave a brilliant speech and he has been appreciated very much by the Chicago people. And uh, sir is inspired by Swami Vivekananda. Yedi, Yedi, Guri, Mutto, Varego, Vidipedi, and that. So, such kind of a words should inspire you. And you have to follow these uh, lines, Swami Vivekananda's lines, to get a successful uh, in your life. So, that is what Sir has spoken. He has spoken about the education. Education is very important. And one of the students also. Speaking about English, you know, English is a very difficult language. According to me, English is a very haphazard language. It is not a difficult language. We, the English students should know, should know about the characteristics of English. English is not prepared well. It is not a systemic, systematically designed language. Yes, like our uh, Kannada, you know, in 12th century, Kannada was a very rich language. There is rich literature we find in 12th century in the hands of Baswana, Alam Prabhu, Akhtamadevi and all. They had enriched the English, the Kannada language very well. But at that time, English was not at all in use. And the 
writers in English in 12th century and 13th century up to 14th century, they were considering to write literature in English is an inferiority for them. One French writer tells, if I know English, but if I write in English, nobody will read my literature. So he was withdrawing, he was fearing to write in English literature. He was not ready to write in English literature. French is much, much older language. French, Germany, English is not even England language. Do you know, England people, they were not speaking English in 13th, 14th century. Only our Jaffrey Chaucer made possible to write in English literature. That is in 14th century. That to later part of 14th century. Up to that century, English was not in existence. It was just a spoken language. English was a tribal language. After Constantinople war, people from French and Germany side, Anglo-Saxons, they went to London. And they were the shepherds. They went to London and they uh, stayed there at the corner of the London city and they were speaking only English. They were not speaking the local language. Latin and other languages they were not knowing. So when they were speaking English and London people started learning English to communicate with them, to sell their goods to them. Like that English has gone. And England people adopted English and they spread English to throughout the world. English is a very flexible language. English has only 26 letters, but our Kannada has 50 to 52 letters. Kannada is a very systematically designed language. Kannada is a phonetic language. We need not to study phonetics. We need not to study grammar to speak good Kannada. Many English teachers wrote Kannada literature. But for learning English, we require to study the phonetics. Because English is a ideographic language. English is not a phonetic language, it is ideographic language. It is creative all the time. People contribute different words from the different nations. So like that, English is a very opposite language. Take for example, only one sound, the, the is used for table. The same the sound is used for nature. It becomes cha in nature. We cannot say nature, isn't it? Yes. This is the nature. And the same term becomes sheer in nation. Like that, it is not a systematically designed language. Language, you know, you should know, language is not naturally born. Language is created by the human beings. Human being has a natural capacity to speak the languages. But language is created by linguists. Bhasya Shastratna. They create the language. Therefore, there are so many languages. There are more than 5,000 languages in the world. In India, we have more than 500 languages. And the 20 are the standard languages and the other languages are just spoken languages. So like that, language is a creation of a human mind. Human being creates the language. Like a carpenter creates this table, we create the language. That is the capacity. It's a communication tool. Isn't it? It's a creative tool. And language changes from place to place. Language changes from person to person. Sir was, while speaking, he was telling that you should be good articulative person. Articulation, you know, that makes you uh, important person in the society. See our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, how he speaks attractively. And people become fan. Isn't it? Speaking is a skill. It's a skill you have to adopt it very uh, systematically and that receives you in the society. If you speak very well, society will receive you every day. If you don't speak well, people will neglect you in the society. You should be very good because we are all language students and going to become language teachers and language has to be learned in a systematic way because language is the individual style. That it. It's the individual style. We have to cultivate it in a systematic way. So that is what the student should not have a wrong notion about the English. English is not a difficult language, it's easy language, therefore throughout the world people are speaking this language. Yes, and it is, it is even, uh, we can say, all the countries are contributing. Every country has a different style of speaking English. We need not to speak English like the Western people. We need not to speak English like 
the Americans. When I was uh, teaching in the American Wayne State University, oh. so I was invited as a guest lecturer there, and Indian teachers are very cheap to uh, their country, uh, currency is concerned, because uh, they pay us very few dollars, but their local teachers are very costly. And uh, they usually invite to Indian professors for teaching uh, in their uh, universities because uh, they pay just $5,000 is enough. Indian teachers will go. My teachers were going, VK Gopak and uh, uh, Girish Karnad, they were visiting to the Wayne State University. I saw their names on the board also. And uh, I gave my all uh, resume and all my academic profile. So they invited me. They gave me 20 uh, lectures. Uh, three before Corona, I had been to America. Even uh, any any professors can go to any universities of the world. English professors. So they, you know, students are very very casual. They are not serious in view. They are very casual. They are sometimes eating chocolate and listening to the teachers, but they are very alert. They were always asking me. Why your uh, women wear bindi and why they wear uh, Mangal Sutra and what is the importance of sari? So, some in Arkan Arendt's uh, the guide is there, guide novel. There we find uh, one ritual, marriage ritual. So, all these questions they were asking. And the professors of that Wayne State University, they were always uh, doing uh, lecturing through conferences. They were not doing classroom teaching, but the students of that local university, they were liking the classroom teaching. They were very much interested. They were always behind me. They were taking me to the classroom and uh, asking so many questions about Indian culture and Indian society. Like that, these are the day. But the human beings everywhere are same. And the Indian human beings are better than other country human beings. But one thing I noticed that they give utmost importance to the discipline. Discipline is uh, deeply rooted in their life. Uh, discipline means if a person who is driving car, uh, we cannot uh, overtake that car and go. We have to follow the car only. Because he has come on the road first means he has some urgency. Therefore, he has come first and let him go first. We have to follow because we have come late. And here in India, we always overtake from the left side and right side and go. So that discipline we cannot maintain in India. It is difficult also. Because of population, because of education system and all. Uh, population will not be the major problem because when we see the, uh, the country like Japan, Japan is a highly populated country. Area-wise, it's very small area. Density of population is more in Japan. But Japan is uh, always fighting with America. Such a uh, hard-working people they have. India, population is not a curse. Population is not a problem in India. Only our mindset is problem. And Professor P. Sarnapasar, while speaking all the time, his speech was motivating to you. And he himself is motivating in front of you. His sitting means he has cleared uh, civil service exams two times. As a PSI also, he joined and resigned within one year. And again, he cleared his KS exam. So take him as a model. He's our uh, very disciplined register of our university. And uh, I have been with him. I have been working with him. His uh, administrative style, writing in files and all these. As in, he's a very quick person. And he clears the files very within a few minutes. So like that, I am uh, very much impressed by him. And uh, his speech is also benefited to you, I suppose. And uh, take him as a model and uh, do the best. And I must uh, congratulate the juniors who have joined our department. You are all lucky students. You have joined to English department. English is a very popular subject nowadays in arts faculty. And you will get any uh, job anyway. You will, but uh, the thing is that you should be good in articulation. You have to articulate it in English. 
getting marks is not important. If you get 60, 70 percent is of no importance. But you have to speak well. Srinivas speaks well in English and some others also. Many of you are good in English, I know, but this is not enough because this is a very competitive world. You have to cultivate the habit of speaking. Speaking style is important. And most of you have joined English department means you are all uh, planning to become teachers, isn't it? You cannot become doctors, but you can become lawyers, officers, any, anything is possible. The thing is that uh, take a aim, take an aim and work according to that and you will get successful. <coughs> this is a very good uh, occasion. Uh, you have designed a nice program today and we have a good uh, chief guest also today and uh, all of you have benefited. And now the meal is ready, I think. You, have provided, you are providing us the meal. And the register, sir, I request on behalf of you, he will be with us for lunch and then only we will leave him. The whole day we have wasted his time, but that your time will be benefiting to our students, sir. Okay? Thanks a lot. Thank you.